Good afternoon, and welcome back to the second part in this series about the future of Britain's rail network, or at least what I think it should be. Today, we'll be looking at passenger sectors and the different types of services that our new railway operator should run. My general, if unimaginative idea, is to split British railways into two sectors, regional and intercity. Let's start with intercity and what routes it should include. To be completely honest, I'm rather satisfied with the 1993 intercity route map from just before privatisation. However, I would certainly exclude the Gatwick Express. It's its own thing, and whatever it is, it definitely isn't intercity. London to Norwich should possibly also be removed, but that's a big possibly. And if it's staying, I do think that London to Cambridge and London to Weymouth and Portsmouth should be added as well. The services that are now Transpennine Express also must come under Intercity. Essentially, Intercity should be nationwide rather than just a London radial operation. As part of this, the cross-country routes need to be fully elevated to proper Intercity status. They've always felt a little bit like the unwanted child, and this must change. The cross-country routes should be electrified from Exeter at the very least all the way up to Leeds, Additionally, the signalling systems ought to be replaced with European train control system, the modern and technologically advanced European standard. It would allow the line speed to be raised to 140 miles an hour, delivering significant journey time improvements with relatively little cost. I would actually propose, though, only timing trains for 125 mile an hour operation. This means that if they were to run late, which they often do in cross-country, they could easily make up time by going up to 140. This would improve reliability across the entire UK rail network, as at the moment cross-country act as a bit of a carrier, spreading delays all over the country. To run these new electric services, a fleet of bi-mode trains should be procured. And don't make the same mistake that was made with the Voyagers. They should all be nine coaches. I do think a derivative of the Class 810 might be a good bet, but considering the quality of some Hitachi trains, I'm not certain. The temptation is to ask for a Stadler or Siemens design, though that would take quite a long time to develop. I do think it would be worth it, though. Both those manufacturers make fantastic trains. But that's enough of cross-country. All intercity routes should operate under one solid brand, with the intercity name. Obviously, you'd need a new livery to the one used in the 1990s, but again, as we mentioned in the previous video, a designer can sort that out. Branding is just part of it, though. The quality of the services should be predictable and high, Upgrades to infrastructure at bottlenecks and other areas of conflict must be made. This will help to improve punctuality and reliability as a whole. Whilst an increase in frequency might be a good idea on some services, I don't think there should be any nationwide programmes, as intercity frequencies are already quite good, and any increase in express trains will just elbow out stoppers. However, the quality of the travelling experience can definitely be improved. Recently, we've seen a huge rise in very uncomfortable seats on intercity trains, uh, this must change. If it means refurbishing fleets, well, so be it, but we cannot continue to have this poor level of comfort on long-distance services. Quiet coaches should become, well, quieter as well. Announcements should be kept to the bare minimum, with only a next stop announcement and perhaps a very rudimentary safety one. But quiet coaches should be more than just noise. They should have a more soothing decor, with warmer lighting and potentially a more sober colour palette. The objective is to get people to, well, be quiet and relax without having to tell them to. As is the case with everything else, good design doesn't require signage to be effective. Though a healthy dose of signage should also be there too, just in case anyone didn't get the message. But we're spending too much time on the fine details here. Let's move on to the next sector, regional. To be completely honest, I'm not certain that regional is the best name, but it is a good description of the service type. The thinking behind regional is that it should operate as a link between communities. This is things such as lower profile stopping services along main lines, semi-fast regional express services, and trains on rural or secondary lines. It would not, however, include local travel, which is trains that operate within cities or large towns, or primarily feed into them. For example, the Seven Beach Line in Bristol or the Cross City Line in Birmingham. 
These would all be handed over to the relevant local authorities, who could then operate them as they so pleased. I would personally like to see them become more metro-style, but, well, it's for them to decide. Like Intercity, regional needs to focus on consistency. At the moment, the difference in quality of regional routes is staggering, and frankly, unacceptable in my eyes. Indeed, sometimes the same route has vast differences between services. Obviously, this needs to change. Regional trains should be utilitarian and practical, reflecting their purpose as essential pillars of the community. Whilst, obviously, all grades of train should have this, regional trains should have a particular focus on bike space and convenience for the passenger. The interiors should also be comfortable, with plenty of tables for families to relax. Additionally, all trains should be fitted with first class. It doesn't have to be much, a small or large section depending on demand, but even a third of a coach would be very useful in bringing in extra revenue. Of course, this should be proper first class. The seats should be in a 2 plus 1 arrangement and should be larger in reclining. On longer distance regional routes, first class passengers should be able to enjoy complimentary drinks and refreshments off the trolley. Now, a strong argument against the introduction of first class is that it reduces capacity on busy services. This is true. However, I do think there's a lot of potential on regional routes to operate longer trains than are currently being used, or even increase the frequency on certain lines. Ultimately, it's, again, all about consistency. If passengers know that they can always get a base standard of comfort, or indeed can always get a first-class seat if they want to pay their money, then they'll be far more likely to use the railways, as they can depend on it. In time, it should become the default method of transport, one that you can always fall back on if other methods fail. Of course, though, why would you want to take another method? If regional can meet all your needs, it's both the default and the gold standard. We've been focusing too much on the passenger experience, though. As I alluded to before, regional trains should have excess capacity in almost all cases. Some of this extra space can be converted into a large safe, so to speak. Yes, that's right, freight transport. Early morning trains should, for example, deliver newspapers to newsagents in the towns they're serving. It all sounds perhaps a bit too romantic, but it's a very efficient way of moving goods, and when combined with a network of electric cargo bikes at stations, we will have significantly decarbonised transport. This shouldn't just be for businesses, though. The general public should also be able to send their parcels by train, too. They should be able to drop one off at a station and have it collected at another a few hours later with a member of staff transferring the parcel between trains if a change is required. And this will essentially create a fast travel network of physical goods around the UK, which would be very beneficial for businesses and individuals alike. This isn't just wishful thinking either. As recently as 2001, the Red Star Parcel Scheme enabled parcels to be transmitted by passenger train between selected stations. It was enormously successful. However, following privatisation in the 1990s, the network became too fragmented to operate it properly, and thus it quickly disappeared. Under our new nationalised operator, though, it would be far easier to reinstate such a service. So, those are some of my views on the potential sectors of intercity and regional. Do leave your own ideas and suggestions in the comments section down below, and if you want to have a more detailed conversation, feel free to join my Discord server. There's a link in the description. Anyway, Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you found this useful. Either way, I'll see you next time, and goodbye.